Beautiful. <laughs> Man, this stuff is awesome. Definitely not along the lines of one of the cheapest modifications that can be done, but fairly efficient in what it does. Weight reduction. Gotta love it. Well, what's gonna be going on today is the installation of this hood, which it's, of course, not as complicated as anybody would think. Um, but the main point of this is to document the installation of these things. Hood pins. A fairly complicated type of hood pin, by the way. Now, I need to get some legal stuff out of the way first. Um, this particular brand is called an AeroCatch, www.aerocatch.com. Let me state officially that I am not a legal representative of the company, nor am I a qualified technician who has actually been trained in this product. So, anything and everything that you see in this video today, please understand I'm not a direct representative in any way. So, if, in other words, if you guys mess up, following my directions to install this thing, I'm not liable for it. Um, please, please, please give the guys over at AeroCatch a call, though. They are uh, very, very helpful staff. They really know their stuff, and they have put out a very awesome product. Um, I will endorse them, essentially, for all the good that my word itself does. Speaking about endorsements, big thanks over to Rob and uh, Frank, was it, at ZX Tuner. Um, that's where this hood came from. So, once again, because I'm not actually an official employee of Rob's, I can't really, you know, say that if you follow my instructions and something goes wrong that, you know, I, well, I warned you. Um, again, I would like to endorse them for everything that they do and for all that we owe them for the ZX2 community. Anyways, let's get this started. Because a stock hood was used as a mold to create the carbon fiber, you'll find little small indentations left over from where different portions and fixtures on the stock hood were originally. It makes it really easy if you wanted to to actually make the fixture mounts for the wiper jets and other components like the weather guard for example. This completely allows you to retain functionality of the stock hood while having a carbon fiber hood. I really recommend going in slow. Start off with a small bit if you're unsure about the size. I'll get the exact measurements and mention it a little bit later and then use a hand file to bring out the finer points of it. Go slow, because if you're like me, you don't have enough money to buy a second hood. Also, as a side note, do not use the bolts that came with the hood to mount these little wooden stands. The bolts that secure the wooden stands are not full thread, so you won't be able to tighten it all the way down properly when you actually mount the hood. You can find it almost any auto parts store. A 6 by 20 millimeter bolt Odds are you won't be able to find one that has a very wide head though. So use a washer in addition to it. That'll give you what you need. Pretty heavy duty. The package that the AeroCatch comes in has got these neat little cutouts that if you'll notice they've been designed to help you figure out where exactly the pin itself is going to be sticking out through the hood. Now, in some of these photos that are going to follow, sorry that they're low resolution, it shows a little bit more of a detailed process as to how we got it to measure up on the hood. First thing you need to do is that when you actually install the hood, don't immediately torque down these bolts. In fact, what am I saying? This is carbon fiber. Don't torque it at all. But what I mean to say is that before you actually snug it down, leave them a little bit loose so you can play around with the fitment of the hood. That'll be helpful once you decide where you actually want to mount your pins. Here's a shot of the passenger side pin, and here's a shot of the driver's side pin, which we had to lob off the bottom half of it because it was too long and interfering with some of the other equipment underneath. Next, drill your holes through the hood, and luckily, because the aero catch needs a fairly big hole to mount itself, it makes this step kind of easy. This is where those cutouts came in really handy. We just placed the aero catch itself, lined it up with the pin, Use the cutouts to kind of measure up exactly where it was, and then just tape down the cutouts to the hood itself. Now here is where we deviated a little bit from AeroCatch's instructions, purely a decision made based on the shape of our particular hood. 
Various photos show, and by the way, this is not endorsed by DepthRacing.com either, shows the aero catch mounted with the larger portion facing towards the front of the car. Now, aero catch's official documentation indicates that it should be installed the other way around, shown here. Their instructions say that this is to provide a bit more of an aerodynamic effect. Although we decided that based on the design of the ZX2's hood, that for a combination of aesthetic purposes and also just practical purposes, we were going to mount it the other way around. Using just a counterpunch to etch in around the outline of where we had placed the cutouts, we ended up with a perfect guide to show us where we should cut. Our first thought was to simply just drill an entry hole and then take a hacksaw and etch our way around. This was, um, tedious. So we just spot drilled the whole thing out. One of the neat things that I like about this particular product is the fact that it's got six mount points for the top of the hood. A bolt and a corresponding lock nut is what secures it down. It just seems a little bit more of a safer design. Not to mention it looks a whole lot more sleek than the standard hood pins. You can get them in models that comes with the locking portion right here or just the standard push portion. It's up to you. Here it is. Holes properly drilled. Everything good to go. Well, that wasn't too hard now, was it? A couple of things you're going to have to adjust on the car once you install the hood. First off, you're going to have to adjust the height of the actual assembly where it latches here. That's mainly because, depending on where the hood actually comes down, it may not completely grab the secondary latch on the inside. It's fairly easy. Just undo some of the securing bolts of this whole assembly and it can kind of move up and down just a little bit so that when the thing actually closes, you press down on it and it grabs the secondary latch. Also, depending whether or not that comes down all the way is on these rubber stoppers right here. They rotate to adjust the height that the hood actually sits at when it's at rest. Be aware though, if you rotate this thing all the way down, when you pull the latch on the inside of the car, the hood may not pop up all the way where you can actually grab it and actually do release the secondary catch on this one. So you're going to want to find the best particular range between what the hood actually sits at and what the settings are for the inside of the car. Seeing as how we just realized that there's a tiny little bit of a surface area between where the hole is and the edge of the hood, we decided to just fabricate a small little piece of sheet metal that is going to go on the inside of it, ringing and adding support to the actual portion of the lock itself. Just a little addition that we decided on putting in there. Here she is in all of her current glory. The paint seems to be holding up pretty well, though I didn't really primer it, I just kind of just went at it with a spray paint can, but it looks pretty good. Alright, well, I guess that's it. Let the uh, comments and ridicule of my cheesy dialogue commence.